Hi everybody, my name's Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Join with me as we talk on the subject of Easily Fooled, an insight into what happens inside religious organisations and some of the behaviour that goes on. We're in doing this through the book of 1 Samuel chapter 5, just to try and stay scriptural. Um, and we'll go with verse cha chapter 5, verse 1, the Philistines and the Ark. Then the Philistines took the Ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to Eshod. When the Philistines took the Ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon, which was one of their idols, and set it by Dagon, Dagon being probably their primary idol, just as a matter of interest. Can you imagine the panic going on with these Philistine guys trying to get the Hebrewic God on side? They'd previously just said, this is the God that wiped out the Egyptians. What are we going to do? They ransacked the Israel army and 30,000 Israelis were slaughtered and they stole the Ark of the Covenant. And this is where they're up to, up to. They're setting it up next to the God of Dagon. And when the people of Ashot arose early in the morning, there was Dagon, fallen on its face to the earth before the Ark of the Lord. Well, the Lord had made a statement, hasn't, hadn't he? So they took Dagon and set it in its place again. And when they arose early the next morning, there was Dagon, fallen on its face to the ground before the Ark of the Lord. The head of Dagon and both the palms of its hands were broken off on the threshold. Only Dagon's torso was left of it. Therefore neither the priests of Dagon nor any, uh, any who come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashod to this day. Now, this is a very particular piece of scripture because the Lord has taken it upon himself to knock this idol over. Now, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Jehovah Witnesses, right now as I speak, your organization, Dagon, is being knocked over. Its hands and its feet are being chopped off and it's going to be left standing there with a torso and you're going to be looking there and you're going to do this. Therefore, the members of the Watchtower Society, nor anyone who come into the Watchtower Society, will tread on the threshold of the Watchtower Society again. It's going down big time because it's just not of the truth. And the Lord is the one that's orchestrating it. Your Jehovah is pulling your Watchtower Society down because it's too harmful. Now, but the hand of the Lord was heavy on the people of Ashod. And might I just say, it's not just the Watchtower only. A lot of organizations are falling day by day because they're just not being managed right. And he ravaged them and struck them with tumors. Oh my God, now we say that the Lord hasn't got an evil side. Well, what do you think this is right? How would you like it if you were one of these Philistines and the next thing you're covered in sores and, and tumours? But the hand of the Lord was heavy on the people of Ashod and he ravaged them and struck them with tumours, both Ashod and its territory. And when the men of Ashod saw how it was, they said, the ark of God, the God of Israel must not remain with us, for his hand is harsh toward us and Dagon our God. Therefore, this is pretty interesting because if you're persistent in false religion, if you're persistent in bad behavior, it will catch up with you. Therefore they sent and gathered to themselves all the lords of the Philistines and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? They answered, Let the ark of the God of Israel be carried away to Gath. So they carried the ark of the God of Israel away. So it was, after they had carried it away, that the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction. Oh my God. And they struck men of the city, both small and great, with tumors which broke out on them. Now, have you ever been in a situation where you wish the havoc could stop? And just when you thought it stopped, it just, the trouble just keeps coming, be it bills or pain or sickness or loss or, or harm to the people around you, and it just won't stop? That's what's happening to these people. Therefore they sent the Ark of God to Ekron. So it was, as the Ark of God came to Ekron, that the Ekronites cried out, saying, They have brought the Ark of the God of Israel to us to kill us and our people. So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, Send away the Ark of the God of Israel and let it go back to its own place. And I just want to say this, many of us Gentile people, are using the Israel God, the Israeli Jewish God, because that's what he is. He's the God of the Hebrews, and we're adopted in 
for Gentile means and we're wrong. And I apologize to the Jews and the Hebrews. We are just using our God, their God, for our means and ends. And it's wrong. And it's killing us and it's hurting us and it's maiming us. Romans chapter 7, if you've got any clue of that passage, will show you how dysfunctional and out of order religiously we are. So that it does not kill us and our people. For we... For there was a deadly destruction throughout all the city. The hand of God was very heavy there. And again, God is being attributed to this harm. And the men who did not die were stricken with the tumors, and the cry of the city went up to heaven. So pretty, pretty. Now 1 Samuel chapter 6, the ark returned to Israel. Now, a lot of people won't put their tail between their legs until the damage is so bad and severe and the casualties are so many. Um, they just won't get the message soon enough. I remember when I had my church, the, um, and this is a testimony which I don't normally share. Uh, I pioneered a church. I broke away from the dysfunctional church that I was in. They had no clue of how to um, multiply. Started off with 10 people, got it up to about 40. Um, but the mother-in-law used to come from the church that we were in over to our church as the meeting, her meeting finished and come and mix with us. And um, that was fine. She seemed to be a nice, she was always a nice lady. But anyway, to cut a long story short, I was building a house and I was a bricklayer and I was running the church and all the rest of it, trying to get the family ahead. But it took a toll on the wife because we had five children and it was very, very difficult. And it took a toll on the wife. And, of course, she decided to leave. It's a long story. But I had a feeling that that was the time when I had to leave the ministry because I had to put my family first. I didn't wait till everything was totally and utterly destroyed, even though the family disintegrated. Um, and uh, she met some other... She actually, she actually ran off with another bloke to the harm of the children. But anyway, we got through that. But what I'm saying is it's sometimes religious people are the most stubborn, unmovable people, even in the face of harm. And it doesn't have to be that way. We can give in and go, well, I've lost and I need to surrender. Anyway, I gave the members of the church or the people that used to come to the church. It was a humble little church. It, it was a pretty good little church. Um, a list of all the local churches and they found the one that they were comfortable with and went. <clears throat> While I went into damage control, which I'll share in my testimony when I get to it one day, when the time's right, um, I had to go into damage control and try and navigate the family which, or sort out what was left of the family, which was, wasn't very nice. Verse 2. And the Philistines called for the priests and the diviners saying, What shall we do? with the ark of the Lord. Tell us how we should send it to its place. So they said, If you send away the ark of God of Israel, do not send it empty, but by all means return it to him with, all trespass, with a trespass offering. Then you will be healed, and in, it will be known to you why his hand is not removed from you. Gee, pretty heavy, isn't it? See, you can resolve things if you confront the issue. But as I've said earlier, we just don't want to confront things anymore and fix things. Then they said, What is the trespass offering which we shall return with him? They answered, Five golden tumors, five golden rats, according to the number of the lords of the Philistines. For the same plague was on all of you and on your lords. Therefore you shall make images of your tumors and images of your rats that ravage the land, and you shall give glory to the God of Israel. Perhaps he will lighten his hand from you, from your gods and from your land. Why then do you harden your hearts as the Egyptians and Pharaohs harden their hearts when they did mighty things among them? Did they not let the people go that they might depart? Now therefore make a new cart, take two milk cows which have never been yoked, and hitch the cows to the cart, and take their calves home, away from them, so that they can't be distracted, see? Then take the ark of the Lord and set it on the cart and put the articles of gold which you are returning to him as a trespass offering in a chest by its side. Then send it away and let it go. 
and watch. If it goes up the road to its own territory to Beth Shemesh, then he has done us this great evil. But if not, then we shall know that it is not his hand that struck us. It happened to us by chance. Well, at least they were prepared not to be over-religious. Can you see that? They said, okay, it'll be a sign to us, which I suppose is religious in a sense, um, that if it goes back to where it come from, it was the Lord. If it doesn't go back to where it come from, all this has happened to us just out of a natural um, cause of events. <clears throat> then... The men did so. They took two milk cows and hitched them to the cart, shut up their calves at home, and they set the ark of the Lord on the cart, and the chest with the golden rats and the images of their tumours. Then the cows headed straight for the road to Beth Shemesh, and went along the highway, lowing as they went, and did not turn aside to the right hand or the left. And the lords of the Philistines went after them to the border of Beth Shemesh, just to make sure what was going on. Now the people of Beth Shemesh were reaping with their wheat harvest in the valley, and they lifted their eyes and saw the ark, and rejoiced to see it. Then the ark came into the field of Joshua of Beth Shemesh, and stood there. A large stone was there, so they split the wood of the cart, and offered the cows as a burnt offering. Wow! To the Lord. The Levites took down the ark of the Lord, and the chest that was in it, with it, in which were the articles of gold, and put them on a large stone. Then the men of Beth Shemesh offered burnt offerings and made sacrifices the same day to the Lord. So when the five lords of the Philistines had seen it, they returned to Akron the same day. These are the golden tumors which the Philistines returned as a trespass offering to the Lord, one for Ashod and one for Gaza, one for Ashkelon and for, one for Gath, one for Akron, and the golden rats according to the number of the cities of the Philistines belonging to the five lords both fortified cities and country villages, even as far as the large stone of Abel on which they set the ark of the Lord, which stone remains to this day in the field of Joshua of Beth Shemesh. Then he struck the men of Beth Shemesh because they had looked into the ark of the Lord. Oh my goodness. So the Lord struck his own people there. He struck 50,000. Oh my God. He struck 50,000 and 70 men of the people. And the people lamented because the Lord had struck the people with a great slaughter. 50,000 people, the ark at Kirajif Jerim. And the men of Beth Shemesh said, Who is able to stand before this holy Lord God? And to whom shall it go up from us? So they sent messages to the inhabitants of Kirajif Jerim, saying, The Philistines have brought back the ark of the Lord. Come down and take it with you. And on that controversial note, I close this talk. See you in the next lesson on Easily Fooled. Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like. Um, maybe even comment. If you watch it on Facebook, like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one of life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.